Hello there my RPG lovers and welcome to another video. Player progression is one of the most important aspects that role-playing games have to get right. From the gameplay perspective, two major features or mechanics if you will, that can directly affect the player progression are difficulty and scaling. The way that RPGs handle difficulty didn't change much over the years, we usually have a couple of options before we begin the game, but there are some games that have fixed difficulty. However, scaling system comes in different variations and most new RPGs have some form of scaling. The goal of scaling systems is to constantly provide a challenge to the players, even though in some cases it really doesn't make sense. Scaling enemies, areas or the whole world just to cater to the player can be really absurd and this system brings a lot of problems with it. Is scaling ruining player progression, do we really need it in every RPG and can this system be avoided? These are all the things that we're gonna talk about, but before we continue, consider subscribing for more RPG content like this and click on the bell icon so you don't miss any future uploads. We can't talk about scaling without mentioning Oblivion. This game had one of the most aggressive scaling systems and it didn't make sense at all actually. It had problems like random bandits with really rare gear, removing weaker enemies while you level up, etc. Although we have to take in consideration that this was the first time that Bethesda tried something like this because their previous games didn't have scaling. NPCs in Morrowind had static levels for the most part so there were some zones in the game with much stronger enemies that you can't kill until you get stronger. This design philosophy was really common back in early 2000s because when you couldn't kill something in those games you just get stronger then come back later. It makes sense when you actually think about it and this creates a good sense of progression. The bad thing about fixed level enemies is limited exploration while your character is low level. Well, quote unquote bad, I personally don't have any problems with this, but there are people who don't like to be restricted while exploring everything right from the start. So even though you have a big world to explore, you're still limited to a few zones until you progress your character. Then the term open world becomes a bit irrelevant. In Kingdoms of Amalur, the developers tried to fix this problem by scaling areas instead of NPCs. So for example, if you enter a 25 to 32 level area as a level 26 character, the enemies will be level 26. And once the zone scales, it will be locked, which means it will never change, and if you come back to the same zone as a higher level character, the enemies will be the same level as before. The zone will basically lock the levels and it will stay like that throughout the whole game. Since Kingdoms of Amalur had a lot of zones, it was really common to switch between them quite a lot while you play. You could easily outlevel the next zone you plan to visit, allowing you to just steamroll all the enemies in that particular zone. Scaling in Skyrim worked in a similar way as well. While it was way better than scaling in Oblivion, it still had problems, especially in the early game. Leveling in Skyrim could be really fast, especially the first 15 to 20 levels. This makes the early game almost non-existing, which meant you could get really powerful really fast. It depends on how you play your character of course, but almost everything that you do in this game will help you level up. I consider early games in RPGs to be really important and I think it should be on the slower side in general in order to actually feel like you're progressing. Scaling is kinda counterproductive when it comes to character progression, because if everyone in the game is trying to keep up with you, why bother upgrading your character at all? It's not that simple actually, but that's not far away from the truth. For example, enemy upscaling in The Witcher 3 is turned off by default because it's optional. This option was actually added later in the patch and if you want, you can turn it on manually. And even though it makes every combat scenario a bit more interesting, it doesn't make sense at all. When your character is higher level, a simple bandit should die in a couple of hits. With this option disabled, the world of Witcher 3 will not scale and everyone has fixed levels. There were people who thought that Witcher 3 becomes really easy even on that march, so I think this was the reason why they added this upscaling mode. But the lack of enemy scaling in The Witcher 3 is not the core of that problem in my opinion. This is actually a topic for another video. One of the reasons why I love gothic games so much is the strong sense of progression. These games usually had a few rules that they follow in order to achieve this. You start off really weak and you actually feel useless for quite a while to the point when some players will just quit the game because it's too hard. But the turning point is right after you get a few levels and some basic gear. You will definitely feel a bit stronger then, but the game makes sure you feel miserable until that happens. I doubt that this game design could work if there was any form of scaling in the game. Gothic games didn't have any scaling at all, everyone had fixed levels and no one gives a damn about you. Gold? Okay, that's mine for starters. I think I'll take your weapon for safekeeping. 
but things have changed since then. Assassin's Creed started adding RPG elements in their games, starting from Origins. Well, actually even some older games had some form of RPG elements, but I think Origins made a big leap. Odyssey brought even more RPG aspects, but we're here to talk about scaling in particular. By default, everything in Odyssey scales to keep the challenge, but with one update, Ubisoft added the option to select the amount of level scaling. The most interesting thing to me about this menu right here is the warning message. This can have unforeseen consequences such as content being too easy and not providing meaningful rewards. The easiest way for me to get bored in the game is when there is no challenge, but this design philosophy is really flawed in my opinion. I think that certain things should be really easy to kill after you gained a lot of levels and especially if you find some legendary gear. But it seems like these developers are trying really hard to properly balance everything in a single player game. And a big part of the balancing issue is, you guessed it, the scaling system. In my opinion, the developers should focus less on the balancing because there is a big difference between unbalanced game and straight up broken game. And this is also a topic for another video. Anyway, as I was saying, this level system in Odyssey allows you to reduce the amount of scaling by selecting different options. This was actually something that players wanted to see and Ubisoft listened, so props for that, but it feels like fixing the leak with a duct tape. On the other side, it's really easy to criticize, but I understand why they went with this approach. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is just absolutely massive, and it has tons of zones and square kilometers, so I don't think if the game of this size would be suitable for unleveled enemies, because you could easily miss a lot of the zones, and then when you come back you would just steamroll everything. So it would have the same problems as Kingdoms of Amalur. I guess it's really hard to think of a system that's a solution for this problem. I complained a bit in one of my videos about the size of Origins, and how it felt unnecessarily huge, but even though Odyssey has a much bigger world, I I actually really love it. Anyway, let's draw the conclusion here. The whole point is, considering how much open world games are trying to be massive today, implementing scaling seems like the easiest way to keep the game challenging and rewarding. It usually does the job, depending on the game, but it will bring a lot more problems with it. Player progression certainly becomes less enjoyable, forcing you to be constantly on the lookout for gear upgrades, and that same gear usually becomes obsolete really fast. No matter how much you upgrade your character by leveling and learning new flashy moves, you don't feel much more effective than before. I would really like to hear your opinion about this topic, do you agree or disagree and why? Feel free to leave a comment down below. There is a lot more mechanics about RPGs that I want to talk about and if you're into these games in general, be sure to subscribe. I do in-depth guides, news and reviews. Special thanks to my Patreons and YouTube exclusive members and if you as well want to become one of them, all the links are in the description. See ya in the next one.